Today in this 2012 Jeep Liberty, we'll be having a look at and showing you how to install the Roadmaster Diode 7 wire to 6 wire flexo coil wiring kit, part number RM-15267. Here's what our diode wiring looks like installed. As you can see, we're utilizing our vehicle's factory tail light and brake light bulb in order to turn our Liberty into a trailer-like vehicle to be towed behind our motorhome. Our Liberty does have a separate turn signal bulb from the factory, but we're not utilizing that. We're using our tail light and brake light bulb to combine all of our functions into one bulb. By utilizing this diode wiring, we don't have to worry about using magnetic tow lights. We utilize what our vehicle already has in place from the factory, so we only have to make a simple connection at the front of it when we're ready to flat tow. The diodes will prevent voltage from the motorhome being backfed into our Liberty's expensive electrical components potentially causing damage. They only allow electricity to flow one direction. So when we're hooked up to our motorhome, our lights work properly. And when we unhook and we're driving about town, our vehicle's factory lights are working just like they would normally. Now the connection to our Liberty is made to our motorhome via our seven to six wire coiled wiring umbilical. The six wire end plugs in to the connector at the front and the seven way end will connect to our motorhome. And now that we've gone over some features, we'll show you how to get it installed. Now for this particular 2012 Jeep Liberty, we are utilizing a Blue Ox base plate kit, a Blue Ox Avail tow bar, the Roadmaster 7 to 6 diode wiring kit for our lighting system, an SMI Air Force One braking system, and a Roadmaster brake light relay. Depending on your motorhome, you may need to use a high-low adapter in order to get your tow bar within the operating range of height difference. To begin our install, we'll be at the front of our vehicle. We have our four-pole flat wiring sticking out from our front fascia. We have this routed behind our base plate and zip tied up. We did this when we installed the base plate while the fascia was off to make it easier. We wrapped our wire in some black electrical tape so we don't see any colored wires hanging out behind our fascia. Now we'll take our six pole connector for the front of the vehicle. We'll pull off the dust cover that's on the back of it and slide that over our wire and just push it up here for the time being. Now we'll take our four pole wire and we'll separate our individual four wires. Now we'll strip back the insulation a little bit from all four wires. Make sure our wires are twisted together nice and tight. Now on the back side of our connector, we'll see six terminals. We'll be making connections to four. We'll start with the ground terminal. That's the one marked GD. We'll loosen the set screw and that'll get our white wire. With that inserted, We'll tighten the set screw onto the wire. Once we have it tightened, we'll pull back and make sure it's secure. Now we'll go to the terminal marked TM, and that is for our tail lights. That'll get our brown wire. Now we'll go to the terminal marked LT. That's for our left turn signal and left brake light. And that'll get our yellow wire. Now we'll go to the terminal marked RT. That's for our right turn signal and right brake light. And that gets our green wire, which is the only wire that's left. And this is what it looks like once all of our connections are made. Now one thing I like to do is take some dielectric grease, which we have available on our website, and we'll flood the back of our connector. This will prevent any corrosion from occurring if moisture was to get inside, causing a poor electrical connection. We can now slide our dust cover back onto our connector. And we'll slide it down to this ridge right here. Now we'll take some electrical tape and we'll secure our dust cover to our connector this will help just protect it even further from the elements. And we'll wrap our electrical tape all the way down 
until we cover up all of our colored wires sticking out. Now we can secure our connector to the prongs on our base plate and we'll attach it with provided self-tapping screws from our base plate. We may need to do a little trimming around our fascia area for clearance for our connector. Here's our wire right here inside the electrical tape. As you can see, we have it zip tied the back of our base plate, it goes around the side of our radiator, goes up into our engine compartment to clear all of the moving components of our steering and our suspension. Brought it down here. We have it zip tied to a transmission shift cable here to avoid our exhaust, try to keep it as far away from the exhaust as possible. Then we have it following our brake and our fuel lines, avoiding our drive shaft. Goes behind the shield for brake and fuel lines here. It goes up, goes over our fuel tank. You see it leave our fuel tank here. Then we have it zip tied to a wiring harness, zip tied to our fuel filler neck goes alongside our spare tire over our hitch and then we have it zip tied above our hitch right behind our driver's side of our bumper opening. We've gone ahead and separated our four wires in the back just like we did in the front. We'll take our white wire now. We we'll need to attach this to our vehicle sheet metal as a ground so we'll measure off how much we're going to need. We'll cut off the excess, strip back some insulation take our ring terminal, place it on the wire, we'll crimp it, and we'll attach this to our sheet metal with a provided self-tapping screw. This will give us a nice solid ground. Now we have our tailgate open to gain access to the two 10 millimeter bolts here and here that hold our tail light assemblies in place. We'll remove these bolts, We'll grab our tail light assembly and pull it out towards us. Now this vehicle is equipped with an aftermarket tow package. That's what this wiring is right here. Otherwise you would just disconnect it right here, but we'll be disconnecting it here by pushing on this tab and pulling back and we'll leave this one connected and we'll just set this aside. We'll remove our loom here to gain access to our wires. Now we have our headlights turned on and we'll use a test light to determine which one of the wires going into our connector is for our tail light circuit. Okay, it's this bottom left one which corresponds to a white wire with a green stripe. So we're going to turn off our headlights now and make our connection. Now we'll take that white and green wire and we'll cut it a few inches back from our connector. We'll strip back insulation from both ends. Now on these two wires we will crimp on our blue spade connectors. Take one of our diode packs. The output side will always go towards our connector. And the other end of the factory wire that we cut will go towards one of our input sides. Doesn't matter which one. We've reached down and we'll pull up our yellow and our brown wire now. We'll measure how much of our brown wire we'll need to go to our connector. Cut off the excess. We'll strip it back. Okay, now we'll take our section of brown wire that we cut off, strip back some insulation, and about a two or three foot section of our white wire that we cut off for our ground wire earlier. Cut off some insulation from there. 
We'll take a blue heat shrink buck connector, which we have available on our website, and we'll combine the two wires together. We're using this white wire as an extension for our brown wire. We'll take the other end of the white wire, strip out the insulation from it, and we'll tie it in to the brown wire that we brought up. We'll take our yellow spade connector, place it on the wires, and we'll crimp it together. And we'll place that connector on the other side of our input. Now we have an assistant stepping on the brake pedal and we'll double check to make sure which one of our terminals is for our brake light. Okay, it's the one here in the middle on the bottom, which is a green wire with a white stripe. Now we'll tape that green wire with the white stripe, cut it in the middle, strip back insulation from both ends, crimp on our blue connectors. We only have blue connectors left at this point. Take another diode pack, output side towards our connector other end towards one of the inputs. Take our yellow wire now, measure off how much we're going to need, cut off the excess, strip back insulation, place on a connector, crimp it, and plug that into the other input. And here's what it looks like with all the connections made on our driver's side. Now before we drop down our extended brown wire, we'll take our heat gun and shrink down our butt connector. The reason we're using a heat gun is because it's a source of indirect heat and not a direct flame like a lighter and it won't damage a connector. We have these on our website if you need one. Okay, we'll take our brown wire that we extended and we'll drop it back behind our tail light, the same path that we brought up the brown wire originally and our yellow wire. Now in the back of our dial packs, we'll move the cover over our double-sided tape. We'll stick the two together, press firmly. We'll plug our tail light assembly back in now. Now we'll reinstall our assembly. Now we will remove our passenger side taillight assembly the same way as the driver's side. Now because the tow package on ours is zip tied to the factory wiring right here, we'll disconnect it at the taillight assembly itself the same way, just so we have more room to work. We'll cut that zip tie off now. We'll gain access to our wires by removing the loom. Okay, our extended brown wire, that's this white wire here, and our green wire, we routed over towards our passenger side, securing it along the way with zip ties to the wiring harness for our seven-way connector. Went alongside the back of our spare tire. We secured it here with a zip tie, right by the side of our hitch and our spare tire. And then we're right behind our taillight area now with our two wires and we can pull them up. Okay, we have our headlights turned on again so we can find out which one of our connections is for our taillight wire. So one on the bottom left again, and that corresponds to a white wire with a purple stripe. We'll cut that white and purple wire in the middle. And strip back insulation from both ends. We'll now crimp on our connectors. Take our diode pack, plug the output side towards the connector, the other end of the wire towards one of the inputs. Take our brown wire now, measure off how much we're going to need, cut off the excess, strip back some insulation, and we'll crimp on connector and we'll plug that into the other input side. And here's what our tail light diode 
looks like once we have that circuit completed. We have our assistant stepping on the brake pedal again so we can determine which one of the wires is for our brake light. Okay, it's the one in the bottom middle. And that corresponds to a white wire with a green stripe. So that'd be this one here. So now we'll cut that white wire with the green stripe in the middle. Strip back both ends. Place on our connectors. Crimp them. Unplug our diode pack. Output side towards our connector. Factory wiring towards one of the input. Now we'll take our green wire, measure off how much we're going to need. Cut off the excess, strip it back. Crimp on our connector. And we'll attach that to the other input. Here's what it looks like once we have our tail light and our turn signal slash brake light wiring taken care of. Okay, now we'll peel off our double-sided tape again and stick our two diode packs together. We'll plug our tow package wiring back in and we'll plug our tail light back in. I'm just gonna zip tie up a few of our wires here to the factory loom just to give us a nice clean install. Okay, we'll reinstall our tail light assembly now. And now we'll test out our wiring to make sure everything works properly. We have our seven to six way wire hooked up to the front of our Liberty, and then we have it hooked up to a tester. All right, we have our tail lights turned on right now. As you can see, they're working properly. We'll do our left turn signal. That's working. Do our brake lights. Those are both working. And we'll do our right turn signal. So everything's working properly when our vehicle is hooked up to a tester, which means it'll work properly when it's hooked up to our motorhome. And that completes our look at and showing you how to install the Roadmaster Diode 7 wire to 6 wire flexo coil wiring kit, part number RM-15267 on this 2012. Thanks for watching and click the link in our description below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com. And leave us a comment if you have any questions.